All right, so today on BK Gardens, we are talking composting in the city. Composting is really a way of life. Uh, you know, I started three years ago, and you know, today, in 2019, this has fundamentally changed the way we think of waste in our household and how we can repurpose stuff that previously would have gone straight to the garbage and to the curb into a great source of nutrients for our garden beds. So, you know, the first off uh, thing we had to learn was I had to learn was like, hey, hey, what's the the right material to compost? How do you source the material living in a city where you don't have a backyard or animals? Um, and what is the right ratio of material um, to compost? And what are the various methods out there? So I'll kind of cover all of those and then give you some practical advice of things that I've learned via mistakes, uh, mishaps over the last three years. First off, um, composting. Essentially, it's uh, first foundational thing you need to know is that you want to get the right ratio of material in your compost. That's basically nitrogen to carbon ratio. Nitrogen, really simple. Nitrogen are your grains. Those are everything from most commonly it's considered, you know, uh, grass cuttings. Um, in Brooklyn right now, uh, not having a big lush backyard of uh, green grass to cut and just throw in our compost pile, we have to go to alternate means. So for us, nitrogen sources are things like coffee grinds, um, also food scraps, which we have in spades. And there's hundreds of thousands of bodegas around here that have extra food scraps available. So you have so many resources uh, between just coffee um, cafes, no matter what city you're in, and also um, uh, bodegas, you have an unending supply of food scraps available at your disposal that you will have to pay for and that are going to hit that, give you all the nitrogen you need. Uh, the carbon side, carbons are essentially browns. Um, the dead leaves, um, they can be dead grass, hay, all that can be, but it also can be newspaper clippings and other material that like, hey, like in the summer here in New York, we don't have um, dry grass, dry hay sitting around. So I had to start thinking of other things I could use to supplement because what we, you want to make sure if you're just throwing in just greens, your foods, your, your compost pile is going to start to turn, turn to rot and it's not going to really break down fast. So, you know, what I started doing is start giving you, you know, give you a few of the ideas that we've been using to supplement um, is, you know, I did some research last year and what I started hearing about is um, coffee chaff. Coffee chaff is a material that is, you know, when you're essentially roasting coffee, Coffee chaff is like when they roast the bean uh, before it gets off to your local cafe for a brewing and they make it into a delicious coffee. They have a waste material, which is essentially the, the skin of the coffee bean is roasted off. That's what essentially what coffee roasting is. And that produces this. It's excellent, smells excellent, really broken down to very tiny particulate matter here. It's like almost like dust. Um, so that makes it another great attribute of it for uh, composting uh, because it'll break down quicker because of more surface area. So when I'm uh, doing uh, composting, so for example, to give you the flow here is what we'll do is here is what a few days of compost uh, food scraps look like at our household. Uh, this is we have a little more company here right now over the last few weeks for the holidays. Um, let's take a look inside. We got coffee grinds in here. Um, we have strawberries, other fruit, apples. Uh, looks like, uh, let's see what else we're picking through here. Blueberries, uh, lettuce, all that goes in here. What I do is we just throw it in a simple Tupperware. It seals it up tightly just because if we don't seal it up tightly, it will turn, there'll be a lot of fruit flies. You know, the city did give out these things a few years ago. Um, they, we just find they didn't work that well. Um, love that the city is encouraging composting. 
uh, but this thing just didn't work well. It was kind of a, um, it, it turned into a, a breeding ground for fruit flies because it didn't seal really tight. So essentially this compost city distributed uh, compost bin has turned into a, a, a chalk holder for our kids for the last three years. So, um, but um, you know, that these, uh, so what I'll do with this is I'll take all this material. This is our um, food scraps from the last three days. And I will throw it into here with my, um, the remainder of those uh, coffee chaff. I threw in there already this morning. So, and that's about the ratio. So uh, for like one thing of Tupperware here, I'm adding about twice as much, at least maybe even three times as much of, um, of the coffee chaff. So I have more browns to greens. So essentially I have say one third uh, nitrogen greens to two thirds um, or one, or basically uh, two thirds of uh, browns. And that's kind of the ratio that I've been finding that works. If it goes a little bit out, I'll add just a little more browns. If it's getting a little bit, if it's rotting and not breaking down, I'll add a little bit more browns. But that's essentially the ratios that I've been using. Uh, you know, coffee, coffee grinds is, you know, we, don't, we have not thrown out coffee grinds in almost three years here at our house. Uh, because, hey, these are great for the compost, super rich in nitrogen. Um, and also, I'll use these actually during the growing, growing season. We'll throw these directly onto some plants like blueberries, raspberries. Hey, they love a nitrogen rich soil. So what I'll do is I'll actually just um, augment. And um, for certain plants that want more nitrogen, I'll throw this right on top at the roots of the plant and um, it'll, it'll provide more nutrients and they'll really respond to that in growth. Eggshells. Eggshells, again, we haven't thrown out an egg, uh, eggshell in almost three years. Um, what we do is essentially after we cook something, what we do is I'll throw this under water real quick, give it a quick rinse out of all the yolk so that it gets really cleaned out. You don't want the egg yolk in there and then let it dry. What I'll do is eventually break these down crumble them up like this. And then these actually I use, I could throw these totally right into the compost pile, but because these are such a great source of calcium, what I'll do is I will throw them into the beds of my uh, tomatoes and throw them right before I plant my tomatoes coming in from, you know, growing seedlings, putting them in the ground in the spring. I will throw uh, a layer of this down at the roots and this will be used as um, for our plants to pull up through the roots the nutrients from these, the calcium rich shells uh, to provide, um, make the plant stronger. Uh, it actually really helps with the, the root, uh, rather the stem development of the tomato. So I use this a lot for various uh, plants we grow here. And uh, again, great tool for uh, helping grow the plants without having to you know, go buy uh, fertilizer or anything else at the store. Uh, another great resource for um, uh, browns in the summer in the city is um, when you again you, you have plenty of uh, food scraps but you don't have enough browns or leaves on the ground. Uh, what you can use are um, you know these are animal like uh, these are equine pellets that I got from a tractor supply company store. These are against essentially the stuff that you know, you use in, um, uh, in farms, they'll use this as the bedding for where the horses go pee. Um, or um, like you could say it's the same material that you, you, you'll, you'll see in like, if you go to your local pet store, this is the same stuff that you use for bedding for uh, kitty litter box, et cetera. It's essentially just uh, pure uh, carbon. So it's like a wood chip. Uh, sawdust is great also. Any, any of these materials are great uh, to give you a supply of carbon for your garden. So uh, next step is getting it out into the yard. What I'll do is I'll take uh, this bin that's ready to go for my um, out to the uh, compost bin and we'll show you what the next step is. All right, so we're back out in the backyard now. 
We have the two bin compost system that we built this summer. Um, you know, this is uh, a plan I got off the internet. It was uh, pretty easy to build. The thing I like about this bin system is that, uh, hey, it doesn't occupy a tremendous amount of space for living in the city. You kind of need that. I, I used to, uh, you know, year one, I did a tumbler bin system. We'll show you a link to that. Hey, that was great for year one. I did have some space to go with a larger setup and, and it's proved to be super helpful. You know, the biggest lessons I've learned for composting is you definitely need enough mass of organic material to get up enough heat to make the compost process happen quickly. And, um, you know, basically what I'll do now is I showed you uh, what I did was um, get the compost uh, food scraps added the co uh, into the coffee chaff this morning and now what I'll do is add all of this into my compost uh, pile. So you take a look at this. Here's the way it looks right now. It's it's a little bit it's a little bit wet for my liking. Um, it, it's kind of telling me you can see that it's kind of moist should a little bit more moist than it probably should be. Um, what I'll do is I'll actually add, love that though, I see a nice earthworm right there. Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually add more coffee chaff to this to get the balance a little bit better. Um, but I'll first get going right now with um, adding some more uh, uh, the, the scraps I've got this morning with some more coffee chaff and then uh, watering this a little bit. First dump in all of the new food scraps plus coffee chaff um, what I will do is actually add in additionally um, more of the coffee chaff in here uh, what that will do is that will dry out some of the excess um, moisture in the pile and get it to more equal balance because again what I'm looking for is about two-thirds browns uh, coffee chaff mostly at this point uh, to the food scraps. So that's what I'll do this morning. Okay, so adding in more of the coffee chaff right on top here. Add a good amount. <coughs> what I'll rake do now is rake this in. So, you know, the keys to getting the compost pile in a good place is A, getting your ratio right. So basically two thirds browns to one third um, greens, which is you know basically two thirds carbons to one third um, nitrogen. Okay, and I look at this, this pile is still a little bit wet. What I'll do is I'll add a little bit more of the coffee chaff back in one second. here this okay getting that in here so it's a good ratio and then what I'll do is just make sure that it, there is enough moisture in it um, you want to make sure that there's a balance of you know once your ratio is right you want to make sure that there's always a little bit of moisture in the pile just not that it's not like soaking wet that's that's the biggest difference between you know getting it too too moist too wet and uh, the right amount of moisture and then the other thing is rotating it uh, what I'm doing right now is um, kind of taking the outside to the inside because uh, once I get the air the air is the other key you want to keep this aerated because then it'll, that'll accelerate um, the microbes that are used to break this down the pile and create a good compost thing. And then once this process is done, um, what I'll do is this is the pile that is like the developing working pile of compost. Um, and then what it'll look like when it's done is this. This is the finished compost pile of what I've uh, broken down over the summer and over the last few months. This was all like food scraps uh, about you know four or five months ago. 
and now it's turned into pretty much rich compost m matter. What I'll do is um, add a little bit of water real quick here and actually add some water over here too. This is still kind of breaking down a little bit. You know, there's still some worms going in here. What I ideally for a healthy compost pile, you'll see that there's plenty of earthworms in the pile. And uh, if they're feeding off of it, it's like that is the, the rich material that you're looking for. Okay, so that's how we compost here at BK Gardens at home. Um, if you don't have space uh, for a compost bin system or a tumbler, there are still plenty of ways for you to be part of the composting system and community in your city. Uh, at every farmer's market, there are places for food, uh, scrap, drop-off, uh, coffee, eggs, coffee grinds, all that. You could drop those off and do exchange for compost. Here in Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Botanical Garden, Botanical Garden does a tremendous um, compost operation in Red Hook uh, where they, they do uh, tons of uh, finished compost every year distributed to the community and uh, local gardeners. Uh, check them out. Uh, hit me up with questions and comments below um, on how you're doing uh, composting, uh, suggestions on how you're doing it in the city. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, uh, composting is good for the environment, and it's even better for your garden beds.